Out. All right. These are our new heads. We just come back from the cylinder head exchange for this uh, LY5 motor. We are very happy with how these look. They, uh, they had to change some valve guides in them and, uh, and we had to put on the uh, BTR stage two springs, our springs for the uh, BTR stage two truck cam. Now we're just going together. Uh, we're reusing the, uh, the stock head bolts. We're not reusing, we have them set, but they're stock head bolts. So they, uh, they'll get torqued down in three steps, first to uh, 22 foot pounds, and then uh, the first set of 90 degrees, and then the second step will be uh, 70 degrees. And then, uh, and then the, uh, the little M8 bolts up top will just get torqued down to 22 foot pounds, and, uh, and that's it. I know that everybody loves the uh, ARP head bolts, and they are awesome, I guess, but uh, these work just fine on a stock application. I haven't uh, seen too many failures on the 5.3s from uh, stretched head bolts or whatnot. I'm sure that happened. And uh, on something like this C5 Corvette over here, where we have a turbo application, you, you, you definitely got uh, ARP studs on that head, on those heads. But, uh, is just going to be a stock 053 with a little stage two truck cam in it. It's a Gen 4 53, the LY5, so it's got flat top pistons. It's a little bit higher compression than the uh, the Gen 3 motor, the uh, I think it was an LM7, which is actually what's in this Corvette. And, uh, Corvette has a uh, sloppy stage two cam. This is a BTR truck. All right. Just run everything in the zero lash. It's important when you're torquing head bolts, everybody's got a special sequence for, for every application, but as a rule of thumb, you start in the center and you grow out in a circle. And you always pour it down level. The idea is to get the center of the weight of the torque to come in and spread out like that as you're torquing down. And, uh, and things will work. If you adhere to this, uh, unbolting them, if you start on the outside and work your way in, untorquing them, a lot of times you can retorque ahead and put it back on after you've taken it off without having it decked or melted and be alright. It's all just uh, how careful you are with the torque, I guess. So we're going to use all down to a real lap on both sides. get the torque wrench and we can get on to uh, the first step of torque for the uh, M8 bolts on the top 
we'll leave those until the end. We just ran them in, so they're just not sitting there loose. Uh, for getting set up, our primary focus is going to be on the M11 bolts, and we want them to uh, the first set step is 22 foot. like to go back over the first bolts after I tighten the others down. I'll always get a little bit more out of them. And this exact right thing right here drives me absolutely crazy for uh, torque to yield hub bolts. On the old school small blocks where we just tightened everything down to 65 foot pounds, when you just tighten it down to a torque spec, and this is true with ARP bolt hardware too, you, uh, you can go back over your bolts 12, 14, 15, 16 times and recheck the torque. And when you start in the center and you grow out into a circle like that, when you go back to the center at the end, you'll always get a little bit more before it clicks again. But you can't do that with torque to yield because the bolt is stretched. But that's a thing if you've done them a bunch both ways. So with the ARP hardware, it's nice, at least because with the ARP hardware, you're not stretching the bolts, you're not gonna mark it, look at a torque thing and say that's it. You can go back over it 12 times. You can unbolt it, take the valve covers off next week and go back over again and recheck your torque and it's okay. So for that, the, the ARP hardware is, is very cool. But uh, these are cool. Let's go to 22. draw a line on each bolt from the center of the bolt straight up and this gives me a good mark Some people will just use a dot. Some people will put a couple of dots or a couple of lines, one dot for the first step of torque, one dot for the next step. I really like the uh, marking up like this. It, uh, it puts a really nice clock position on the bolt that is uh, unmistakable as you make your torque. sequence needs to be 90 degrees. Fair. They're a pain to set up. 
and when you do set them up, they're uh, close to accurate. But a lot of times when you put them on, you get the bar, they twist a little bit and they flex a little bit as you get in your degree. So it's not like uh, really accurate in anyway. But also the bolts have a little bit of a range that they can be stretched. And you're just getting into that range. And so we're okay with this. Or at least for a whole career I've never had a problem with it. such a uh, block breaker bar really helps draw up 90 degrees as well. Turn this this way. So that I can You can see where all my marks are on the heads on my bolts. Now we gotta do the next step. The next step is just 70. So if this is 90, we'll say this is 70, right? We'll say like three o'clock, thereabouts. Yeah, four o'clock. Wait, two o'clock, not three o'clock. Two o'clock, I'm sorry. This second one is the stretch of the bolt.
favorite tool. I love this impact wrench or torque wrench. This torque wrench will do from 50 up to 250 foot pounds. I bought it from Snap On back in, uh, oh gosh, 06 or 07. It has a name on it Brutus. Yeah. All right. Okay, now we need to uh, torque down the top row of the M8 bolts. Just the 22 foot pounds. They all have a 10 millimeter head on them. Soon. We're uh, waiting right now for transmission. The transmission is coming to us from uh, from RPM Transmissions. We placed our up order with Jeremy up at uh, right before Christmas. In fact, I got to wish the man a, a Merry Christmas. And uh, so the transmission should be leaving, shipping out from them momentarily. So there's a five to six week build time, which puts us right to where we are right now. So the timing for the cylinder heads coming back from the cylinder head exchange is perfect. I should be uh, finished getting this motor rest uh, dressed and ready to go by the time the transmission ships out. The transmission has to go in first and then the engine will go in because the way I took it apart. I, uh, we obviously didn't pull the body off the frame so we pulled the engine out and then we pulled the transmission. We slid the transmission off of the transfer case and pulled it out of the engine hole. So it has to go back together that same sketchy way. Uh, but for anybody doing cylinder heads on uh, anything LS, really, if you're using the stock hardware, it's uh, 22 foot-pounds for the base setting on all your uh, bigger bolts. And then it's one step of 90 degrees. And then it's one step of 70 degrees in a circular pattern, starting at the center, growing out in order. And then after that's done, all the M8 bolts up top get tightened to just 22 foot-pounds. And, uh, and you're good to go. I'll make another video for the other stuff. Go ahead and end this up.